Welcome on in, guys. Tobin here with you. Thanks for checking out the channel. If you guys could subscribe, that'd be great. Appreciate you stopping by. Subscribe as well to the QAM YouTube channel. You can watch Tobin and Leroy every single weekday for four hours, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And uh, Game Day Uncensored. We uh, do our pregame show on the QAM YouTube page on the Odyssey app. Myself, Solana, uh, Omar Kelly, and Adam Beasley stop by the program every single week. And we get you ready for that Dolphins game of the uh, of the season. Whatever game that is. This week it is Patriots. So it's 9 a.m. showtime for us this week. And I'm going to get into the Dolphins here. Because actually there's a lot of good vibes around the Dolphins right now. A lot of good vibes. I just watched the Mike McDaniel mic'd up. Which was tremendous. Um, but I got to get to this. And, and look. It, we got to make fun of the New York Jets, okay? And I realize that the New York Jets, the Dolphins are a loss away from being pretty much where the New York Jets are. But that day is not today. And to read this article that's out, the juicy article that's out right now, um, that is basically saying after their week four loss to the Broncos, that Woody Johnson went to coaches and said, bench Aaron Rodgers. Wow. And apparently they all had to talk him out of it. And one coach apparently asked the owner, are you, even, are you serious? Apparently he was. And they were like, that's not going to sit good with the locker room. We're going to embarrass the guy. What are you doing? And then a week later, Robert Sala was fired. So maybe, I mean, Aaron Rodgers was telling the whole truth about not having uh, not having anything to do with Robert Sala getting fired. I suppose this uh, if this report is true from The Athletic, that would uh, make a lot more sense rather than uh, Aaron Rodgers being the, uh, the puppet master. But even still, man, the Jets are a dumpster fire. But right now, the Dolphins are not. The Dolphins are Colin Cowherd's number 10 overall team in the NFL, ladies and gentlemen. That's the hurt. And that's even without, in his mind, Christian Wilkins playing this season for the Dolphins. He's around the corner. At any point, Christian Wilkins, in Colin Cowherd's mind, is going to be shooting. Man, that was an embarrassing gaffe from him. Unbelievable. I realize national hosts don't have to have uh, the, the people think that as a national host, you should know everything about everything, but it's always to me, the reaches that are, comp that, that should be pretty obvious that you whiff on. And those always are really, really funny, but what do you expect? I mean, what do you, what do you expect from this guy? He's been, he's been flip flopping on the fins for a long time now, but there has been a lot of positive. I saw him saying that, uh, I wouldn't want to face them right now. Even at four and six K Adams has always been a big, uh, Dolphins a pundit. She is uh she's been a, a big time Dolphin supporter. She uh she's got the the backing of where the team's at right now. And I gotta tell you, the team does seem pretty confident. Listen to Cater Kohu this week talk to the media about them never really losing any mental confidence. And a lot of people are just like, yeah, Tua wasn't there. Like and I think that's kind of lost on a lot of people because I don't know. You know, it, it, it's such a lightning rod topic because you talk about so many things about him aren't just taking into account his ability to play football. They're all other things like how he physically looks in comparison to other quarterbacks, not just the way he plays quarterback for this team. Is he a franchise quarterback? Is he a system quarterback? Can he hold up? Hey, there's no question the guy's got durability issues. I don't like him running. I'm not a fan, but I'm also a fan of the guy, and I do like watching him play football. And him not playing football in the games he doesn't play football, if that doesn't make a Dolphin miss the guy playing football, I don't know what does. But Cater was basically making the point that, you know, the there were definitely games that they felt they should have won, but they never lost belief that they were a good team because they were in position in those games. And then when they got Tua back, they really felt like, they were going to uh, to do something. So I found that to be pretty interesting. The other thing is this Mike McDaniel mic'd up was delightful. Mike McDaniel mic'd up is way different from press conference Mike McDaniel. They're almost like two different people. It's almost like 
I don't know. It, it, it's almost like he's he's let out to play. It, it's so it's such a different character than the meandering, um, ah, uh, long winded, you know, trying to say everything guy that we have at the podium. Though he did say some pretty thoughtful things this week, and one of the points he was making was that this change in offensive philosophy for Miami about being able to sustain drives has basically been the entire point of the offseason, that they got to this thing quicker because Tua got hurt. So it kind of sped up the process of them needing to get there because they had to find other ways to win. And, you know, that that the byproduct of that was they were a little bit more in tune with doing it once he got back under the helm and started running things again. But... As much as I miss the Tyreek Hill cheetah bombs and the Jalen Waddle bombs, and man, I cannot tell you, I miss them. It cannot be denied that this Dolphins team is, it, it does feel like it's got a, 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 a just a better versatility to it this year. Is that going to mean better? We're going to see because they, you know, they're doing the thing right now where they got to take care of business and they got to be a division rival and there is no margin for error. And the hyenas will be out the soon the, the the next time they slip up. They haven't left theirself any wiggle room. It's like it's it's like Calais Campbell said. They they dug themselves a big ass hole that they got to get out of. But McDaniel basically, I, I do think that there's there's got to be some credit that goes to him for realizing whatever was working early on last year petered out and it wasn't going to work uh, anymore or it, it felt like it was going to go that people were going to adjust to this right it was actually interesting too because everybody was uh, you know they talked about the two high safeties and the mic'd up and he's like going to two he goes they didn't account for uh, improvisation to a to a on the run mobile they didn't account for that too yeah, shut up frog boy shut up dude um they didn't account for that and I think that that was pretty cool that they they all feel like they're kind of learning new new ways to go and craft a win. Um, and and you have to say, like, man, the four weeks that two has been back, even with the, uh, you know, even the record being two and two since he's been back, you know, he, the offense, the offense minus critical turnovers has been pretty damn good and has been working at an efficient rate. And has been working different and getting John U. Smith involved. John U. Smith looks like an absolute stud right now with the way that he's playing football. Devon A. Chan, incredible. There's definitely a, it seems like a changing of the guard at running back. They seem a little rats off a ship on Raheem Mostert. Maybe part of that's age. Maybe part of that's being banged up. I don't know, but it definitely feels like it's Devon A. Chan's backfield and everybody else get in line. Mind you, they, the, the, the run game hasn't had Al Gingle the last couple of weeks. There's that to keep in mind. There's not having your starting right tackle in mind. But even still, like that hasn't you haven't felt that that chip away from Miami. So I I definitely think that this, you know, you you watch the uh you watch the the interaction the coach has with the squad and the belief that he has and the the way that team really does seem to rally around him. Yeah, they've left themselves very little margin for it. But that guy really does feel like he's got everything humming. Um, and and does feel like even with, with all the uh the long winded answers that they they are following. There is a confidence that he has to him and that that he does feel like he's got his swagger back a little bit. Could be Raiders, could be schedule. I don't know. Right now we gotta just take this thing week by week and 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 see where this all ends up because yeah, there's still they're on the outside looking in. They have to break through. They need some things to break their way to uh, to find their ways where they want to be. But, you know, this whole I, – I think you do got to give McDaniel a little bit of credit to be like, all right, people took away our best weapon. Are we screwed now or are we going to find a way to adjust? And And the good coaches find a way to adjust, and he's found a way to adjust. It's not as fun to watch. Um, although I enjoyed last week's game, it's it's not like the risk taking, but they are dictating these games. You know, they're they're trying to take the games in their hands and and control them and 
use effective plays and keep drives going. I mean, what they did last week was bananas. You know, he had even said that in the in the thing to to Tyreek, where he's like, "Hey, this was what you suggested last year," and he alluded to that this year when he was speaking this week to when he was talking to the media. But even what they were doing was crazy with the uh, with the ability to just keep the football and keep drives going and sustain those drives. And it's going to be an interesting test because you don't want to look ahead to anything. You can't do it. You got to get you got to take care of this game. You got a TCB against the uh, against the New England Patriots. It's not only a TCB. It's 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 the TCB don't lose. Because, yeah, Drake May's making them look a little bit better and they have a little bit more belief. But you can't lose to that team in your building. Not not with where the season's at. That can't be the game. You know, at least at least let it let it be in the in in the snow filled Lambeau field frozen tundra. Right. Like, at least let that narrative be the thing. Don't let this be the thing that brings you down. But. I can't help but be curious to be like, all right, what is this? How does this travel? When the elements start changing, and it is going to be rougher conditions, like how does how does this Dolphins team look? Does does it make a a a a real difference when they start getting to these tests to see if they can really get their way in? Because that's going to be the window, right? That, like that, it does feel like they they take care of business. Everything feels like it's going to come down to Thanksgiving. Either even up the season, you win on the road. What seems like it's going to be pretty adverse conditions for this squad and if you win that one if you are able to get yourself in all right all bets are off you were able to dig yourself out of the big ass hole and now you can start your journey again but if they but but their their method their climb is not over they still got to get there but they seem better equipped to handle it from a game planning standpoint from a mentality standpoint uh, we just gotta see if it carries over, and and but but I but I gotta give Mike McDaniel credit. Watching him peacocking on those sidelines and and feeling as froggy as he is, definitely does feel like a coach who 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 senses he's figured something out and feels very confident again, because it it it, it did seem like that was breaking a little bit for Coach Mike, but now all right, a couple of wins under his belt, feeling himself again. So hopefully, uh, hopefully that keeps up for him.